Hi, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a poem with you from NCRT's English textbook for class 12. The name of the book is Flamingo. This is the first poem uh, in this textbook and the title of the poem is My Mother at 66. This poem is written by Kamla Das. Kamla Das was a bilingual writer who wrote in Malayalam and English. Her pen name was Madhavi Kutti and she has several poems, novels and short stories to her credit. She was a sensitive writer with a lyrical tone. Kamla Das is regarded as a confessional writer on par with global literatures. She was shortlisted for her Nobel Prize for Literature in 1984 and went on to win the Pan Asian Poetry Prize, the Kerala Sahitya Academy Award and also the National Sahitya Academy Award as well. As an Indian English poet and feminist, Das has secured a prominent place in many anthologies of English literature. In her writing, she gives voice to the struggles of Indian women who suffer behind the thick veil of conservative traditions and customs. She captures the complexities of human relationships with frankness and integrity. Kamla Das' mother too was a renowned poet and she had many other established writers among her relatives. The literary atmosphere in her family inspired her to create a magazine with accounts of her toys and experiences at the tender age of six. Over the years, she blossomed into a powerful poet whose expression of women's choices and experiences impressed many. My Mother at 66 is an autobiographical reflection that is both sensitive and moving. The poet deftly paints a portrait of her aging mother with her words. Now before we read the poem, let us reflect on a few questions. If I asked you to think of tender and cherished moments between your mother or your grandmother or older sister and you. I am sure you would have many examples. Narrate any one that has left a lasting positive impression on you. You can even make a card thanking them for the gesture that touched you the most. Will you do it? It's a reflective moment for you. Reflect on any incident that is still fresh in your mind. Write about it. You can write a short note or you can make a card. You know, sharing your feelings with your mother, grandmother or your older sister. They are going to love it. I am sure you talk to your mother about the happenings of the day and take her suggestions for making significant decisions. If it is related to school or your friends or something else, you must be sharing things with your mother. Make a list of all the instances or tasks that she helped you with last week. Now show them to your mother and ask her to recall if she also sought her mother's inputs on matters like these. So this is an activity for you. Do it at leisure, but you must do it. As children, we sometimes forget that our parents age as we grow up. Aging is a natural process, but it would also be more thoughtful if we focused on what our elderly parents expect from us. What do they expect from us? Love, care. We should also give them importance. We should not neglect them. We should empathize with their situation. Sometimes they might feel lonely. 
So, we should be there to give them company. Now, let us read the poem. My mother at 66. As you all know that poems have to be read with proper stress, intonation and rhythm so that we capture the meaning of the poem. And also when you are reading a poem, pay attention to the punctuation marks. If it, there is a comma, this is a shorter pause. A full stop indicates a longer pause. And look at the use of words, their context. All these things will help you gather the meaning of the poem. I will read the poem for you. Please open your books on page 90. Driving from my parents home to Cochin last Friday morning, I saw my mother beside me, doze, open mouth, her face ashen like that of a corpse and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked but soon put that thought away and looked out at young trees sprinting, the merry children spilling out of their homes. But after the airport's security check, standing a few yards away, I looked again at her when pale as a late winter's moon and felt that old familiar ache, my childhood's fear. But all I said was, see you soon, Amma. All I did was smile and smile and smile. With this, we have come to the end of the poem. I hope you enjoyed listening to the poem. You must have appreciated the idea of the poem shared with you that the poet is talking about her mother. Uh, the words like sprinting. Sprinting means short fast race or running. You must be familiar with this word because in school you have sports and games. Then van is colorless. Did you notice that the whole poem is in a single sentence punctuated by commas? It indicates a single thread of thought interspersed with observations of the real world around and the way these are connected to the main idea. I am going to read the poem again for you. My mother at 66. Listen to the poem very carefully. Poems are meant to be read aloud and number of times. This time you will be able to gather the holistic meaning of the poem. Driving from my parents home to Cochin last Friday morning, I saw my mother beside me, doze, open mouth, her face ashen like that of a corpse and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked but soon put that thought away and looked out at young trees sprinting, the merry children spilling out of their homes. But after the airport's security check, standing a few yards away, I looked again at her when pale as a late winter's moon and felt that old familiar ache, my childhood's fear. But all I said was, see you soon, Amma. All I did was smile and smile and smile. Therefore, you know, she's saying that this was her childhood fear that she might end up losing her mother. That has surfaced once again because her mother has really grown old. Let us discuss a few comprehension questions. The first question is, 
what is the kind of pain and ache that the poet feels? When the poet sees the pale and lifeless-like face of her mother, her old familiar pain or ache returns. Such thoughts make her recollect her childhood fear and anxiety of losing her mother. Aging is a natural process. We know that. Time and aging spare none and death is inevitable. The idea of getting separated from her mother distresses her even now. As a result, even her smiles are an expression of her helplessness at the face of what is inevitable. Next question, why are the young trees described as sprinting? The poet is driving to the Cochin airport. When she looks outside, the young trees seem to be running. The sprinting of the trees symbolizes the rapidly passing years of human life from childhood to old age. The poet presents a contrast, her dozing old mother and the sprinting young trees. What a beautiful contrast, young, active and strong versus old, weak and lonely. The young trees represent life in contrast to her mother's approaching death. I hope the contrast is clear to you. Next question is, why has the poet brought in the image of the merry children spilling out of their homes? In the poem, the poet has shown contrasting images of life and death. She has incorporated the image of the happy children running out of their houses to play in order to signify liveliness, strength, health, beauty and happiness. This image is a sharp contrast to that of her mother who has become old, she is inactive, she is weak and frail. The poet has juxtaposed that is put two contrasting images beside each other. Childhood marks the beginning of life whereas the old age marks its end. Why does the poet use this contrast? What do you think? The contrast of two images enhances the poetic effect. My next question is, why has the mother been compared to the late winter's moon? With growing age, the poet's mother has started losing all her strength and glow. The poet uses the simile of a late winter's moon for her mother to indicate her approaching death. During winters, life around us is not so vibrant and it is synonymous with lifelessness and dormancy. When the winter is severe, we don't see any movement. People stay indoors. So there is no movement. And a winter's moon is also pale white in color. It bears close resemblance to her mother who having lost all her strength and beauty looks wan and pale to the poet. Her mother too is in the last phase of her life. This much is clear. What do the parting words of the poet and her smile signify? parting words and the smile. You can go back to the poem. Read these two lines once again. The poet's parting words, see you soon Amma, signify both her farewell to her mother and an effort to leave her with optimism and cheer. They also enable the poet to empathize with the sense of isolation faced by her mother in the old age. Her smiles signify her helplessness in the face of her mother's inevitable death. They express her love and concern for her mother along with the underlying pain and struggle that she undergoes in coming to terms with this bitter truth. What 
poetic devices have been used by Kamla Das in the poem My Mother at 66. The poem My Mother at 66 is rich in imagery. It looks very simple, but the poet has used beautiful imagery. Kamla Das uses the devices of comparison, contrast, which we have already discussed. Her use of simile is very effective. The poet's old mother's face is described as ashen. This ashen face is like that of a corpse. You must be knowing that while we are comparing two things with the word like, it is known as simile. The poet uses another simile. The van pale face of the mother is compared to a late winter's moon. The poem excels in contrast. The old dozing lady inside is contrasted with the young trees sprinting and merry children spilling out of their homes. Let us look at some examples of how poetry can be used to celebrate, describe and remember loved ones. I am going to read these two, three lines from another poem of Kamla Das, My Grandmother's House. There is a house now far away where once I received love, that woman died. The house withdrew into silence, snakes and moved among books. I was then too young. See, as I told you in the beginning that she has written many poems related to her life. So here she is talking about her grandmother's house. You can also write a poem about your grandmother's house. Your poem can be happy, chirpy, positive or anything that you like. If you are new to poetry writing, then a simple and enjoyable format is that of a synquin poem. What is a synquin poem? A synquin poem is a five line poem. I have created one poem for you. Let us look at the poem. The first line, mother, it is a noun, fabulous, gorgeous, two words. They describe your mother, they are adjectives, caring, loving, amazing. These are verbs, action words, loves shopping. The fourth line is it can be a phrase or you can write adverbs here over, two adverbs, loves shopping. And the last line, either you write the synonym of the first word, mother, you can write mom or you can write a word that describes. I have written the word protects all mothers, protect their children. So like this, a synquin poem has been created. Would you like to create one? Choose a topic and you can write a poem. Now I have a writing task for you. The task is write a poem on your mother, recite it for her. You have to recite it to her. She should know what you have written. It can be of any length. The next writing task is write a paragraph on the anecdotes that you may have gathered from your grandparents about their childhood. Your parents, your grandparents must have shared stories about their childhood. So now you have to write a paragraph describing their childhood. You could recount the games they played, stories or poems or songs they enjoyed or even their favorite memories of their parents and siblings. You can paste a family photo in a journal, scrapbook alongside. So it's going to be a paragraph or a poem on your family. With this, we have come to the end of this poem. You must read the poem carefully with proper stress intonation, pay attention to the punctuation marks, enjoy reading the poem. Thank you.